What's going on, everybody? Gentleman94 here. Welcome back to Ben Builds. We are here on the Albatross D3, the Edward Weekend Edition kit, and I'm really excited to go ahead and dive in today and start getting some plastic pieces glued together. Now, I'm going to start off with the engine today. We're going to be putting the majority of that together, and we're going to see what we can do to kind of spice it up a bit. Next episode, I want to go ahead and detail the engine up, do some painting, do some dry brushing, and then also maybe add some wires or something to it. I think that we can actually really make an improvement to the engine because right now it's pretty plain. And it's small too, but it's still pretty plain. If we look at the instructions here and we look at the actual engine, there's not a lot of parts. There's two halves, a top section, a back section, and then we have a side piping section. That's about it. So we're going to put the majority of it together and, well, we'll just hope for the best. So let's take a look at it and see what we have to work from. As you can see, the engine is pretty well detailed. There's a lot of little parts and pieces that kind of stick out and are molded in. I don't have any problem with that. What I want to do, though, I want to add some wires from each of these cylinder heads. I know there's some spark plugs that are molded into the side of each of these. I want to add some wiring to that. I might want to put a distributor cap wiring bundle at the back of these. I know there's two of those. I don't know. I'm going to do something fun with it. That'll be next episode, though. Today, I just want to go ahead and get it built so that we can take some dimensions, see what fits inside the uh, fuselage, and how much you can actually see so don't waste too much effort. So let's go ahead and jump into the assembly of this, get this thing built up, see how it looks. So the engine looks decent enough. Now, like I said before, there's not a lot of parts and pieces to this. It's rather simplistic. So overall, I think it's going to be a very nice canvas to work from. I went ahead and put together most of the engine. I left off one of the side piping areas because that's not really going to be beneficial for me to leave on right now. It's going to be in the way if I decide to detail it. So we're going to leave it off. We need to paint it anyway. I'm going to let the engine dry, and we're going to do a few sub-assemblies here. I'm working on the ammo cans for the machine guns. I'm going to get that all glued in, get that ready to go. And now we're going to turn to the fuselage. Now, the fuselage here has these ejection pins that stick out from the front of the nose and also on the back of the tail. So we have to go ahead and remove those. Now, instead of taking a hobby knife and a sanding stick and just kind of working it slowly, I'm going to bring in the big guns, and we're going to pull out the Dremel. I'm going to use this little bit here at the end and just grind them off.
I tell you, Dremels are amazing tools. If you don't have one, highly recommend to go out and get one because it makes jobs like this a whole lot easier. We're going to smooth out a couple of little rough edges here, but I'm not too concerned because most of it will be covered up by the engine and the engine mount. So I'm not too concerned about leaving a few extra rough spots. Now we have to talk about priming. I want to go ahead and prime the entire surface of the inside of the fuselage with this XF20. I think it's going to give us a nice base to go ahead and work from. So let's load up the airbrush, get this painted. So the XF20 looks fantastic. It's going to give us a nice base coat to work from. And the next step is going to be one of the hardest here we have to work on in this stage. Everything on the inside, as well as the engine mount and the different parts and pieces here on the sprue that I primed, all this has to be a wood color. And the wood is going to have to be replicated with some oil paint. At least that's what I want to try to do. Now we're going to be using three different colors of oil paints. We're going to be using this one here, Burnt Sienna. We're also going to be using this yellow ochre, really, really cool color, and finally, raw umber. All these three, when mixed together, should give us a nice reddish brown that we can go ahead and paint on the inside of the fuselage, where the cockpit and the engine compartments would be. I'm going to be using this older brush here. It's soft. It's pretty supple, so it should be easy for mixing, and we're just going to put a dab of each of these color tubes here on my makeshift palette. So we'll start out right here. A little raw umber. And then we're followed by our burnt sienna. Right there. Actually, a little bit, little bit more there for us. There we go. And we're going to put one more drop here of our yellow ochre. And that is going to do it for us. Now we're going to take our paintbrush and we're just take a little dab of each of these three colors. And let's see what it looks like. So just a little bit of the yellow ochre. A little bit of the burnt sienna and raw umber. Let's mix it up. And this is, yeah, this looks about correct. So now we can just grab all the rest of these colors, mix them all together, and we should have enough to go ahead and cover the entire inside of the fuselage and the cockpit. All 
All right, guys, we have the cockpit finished up. It's all painted. We have everything done here with the other parts and pieces for the cockpit itself, like the floor and the firewall. So we're looking decent there. So all of our parts are now painted with our oil paint mixture. And I really have to say, I like this color. I think it looks really cool. Now, I actually am going to take a very soft brush and I'm going to be going over the entire area, all the areas that I painted with my custom oil mix. I'm going to be using a very soft brush to kind of draw out the color in one direction from the nose to the tail. I'm going to go bit by bit, section by section, and I'm going to actually be removing some of that oil. And then I'm going to wipe out the brush to make sure it's always kind of clean. And then we're just going to take it and just keep going until I have the desired effect. And what I'm going for is a little bit of the XF20 to show through, to give it a little bit of a 3D appearance, and to give it some wood grain. This is my first time ever trying this, but I want to say I'm hopeful. All right, guys, we are done for today. All of the oil paint has been nicely textured and drawn out. We have a beautiful shade of brown, and I think we're ready to go ahead and let this dry. Now, forewarning, oil paint takes a heck of a long time to dry, minimum a few days. So we're going to just set this aside, let this dry, and we're going to go ahead and jump on the engine and do some work and detail up the engine as best we can. But that'll be for next episode. So until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been so much fun so far, and I can't wait to see what else we come up with. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Until next time, stay strong, keep on building. We'll see you back here next Monday on Ken Builds.